Today on Champions of Care, we're talking about resources and options for end-of-life care from the moment you learn that you have a life-limiting illness until your final days. One of the most important tools in this process is to have a document which declares your wishes about your end-of-life care, even if you can't speak for yourself. That's called an advanced directive, and we have an expert on advanced directives with us in the studio. Please join me in welcoming Don Johnson, who is a staff nurse in the Family Matters program at Oakwood Hospital and Medical Center. Don, welcome to Champions of Care. Thank you, Mary. I'm glad to be here. Please tell us, what is an advanced directive and, and what kind of information is part of a good advanced directive? Advanced medical directive is, is a broad term for any document that either describes what a person's wishes are for health care in a certain situation at a time when they couldn't express that themselves, or that designates a person that would make decisions for them about their health care at a time, again, when they can't speak for themselves. Or it can contain both. Now, is that the same thing as a living will? Living will is a common term that describes those choices for care that people might express. When they write down that in a certain situation, I would or would not want certain interventions, that's generally for, referred to as a living will, sometimes also called a statement of wishes. And what is a medical power of attorney or power of attorney? Power of attorney for health care, medical power of attorney, that is a title of a document that legally designates the person that would make decisions for someone who can't speak for themselves. Legally, the force is the same, whether it's titled patient advocate designation, health care agent designation, or durable power of attorney. Now, how does someone put one of these things together? Are there online resources, or is there some tool that folks can use to, to declare their wishes? Attorneys can draft documents for people, but it's also possible to do a document using an advanced directive package, like the one that Oakwood offers for its patients and employees and for the community. It's called My Voice, My Choice. It includes all the paperwork necessary and instructions to complete a designation of someone to make your decisions, um, and also to lead through a discussion of what your wishes might be in certain situations and document that as well. Now, you're with a, a program at Oakwood called the Family Matters Support Services, Support Group. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you make this product available free of charge to anyone who contacts you? Indeed, we do. And how do they contact you? Patients meet and merely need to tell their nurses that they're interested, and, and they tell us, and we deliver the documents and assistance. Um, anyone else can call our service and just ask for the packet, and we'll mail it out. Great. Now, what is your advice? for involving the whole family or a spouse or in involving even faith, faith leaders in the creation of an advanced directive? I think it's extremely important to involve those people. It's often a family member or a friend who is, who is the designated advocate and they need to have information from the patient themselves about what their wishes might be um, in an end-of-life situation or in a critical medical situation. Um, and the patient's choices themselves are often influenced by their religious beliefs, their personal experience, and a number of other factors. So, of course, patients should involve religious leaders and their physician um, in discussion of what their wishes might be. And then that has to be communicated to the people who might be legally designated to make those decisions for them. Now, it sounds like the, a, lot, a lot of value could come from the discussion alone but is there a right way and a wrong way to write it all down? No, there's, there's a variety of ways. And, and that's why I think it's often the conversation that takes place in terms of what a patient would want and what might trigger them to say, don't do those things to me. That's where the, really the rubber hits the road for an advanced medical directive is end of life decision making. And that's why it's very difficult to talk about ahead of time because no one wants to talk about or think about their own death and what that might look like, let alone discussing that with their loved ones. Now, if I, if I arrive at your hospital in an EMS and I'm unconscious, how do you find out that I have declared my wishes in advance through an advanced directive? Currently, there's no real reliable way to do that. Unless there's a family member accompanying that we can ask, 
uh, is does an advanced directive exist? Unless the patient has been a patient at our hospital before and we have it on the medical record, because it's kept as a part of the medical record, oh, we so, wouldn't so. have any way to know if they have an advanced directive or what it says. But once I am your patient and I have uh, given you a copy of this, it stays there associated with my name and, and my unique identification. That's comforting yes. to know. That's very mm -hmm. comforting to know. Now, most people are reluctant to think about these things, let alone talk about these things. What advice do you have for our viewers to start the conversation? I think first realizing that these conversations are very important. Um, advances in medical care have made it likely that decisions will have to be made at the end of life and with the life-limiting illnesses that Dr. Williams was talking about. And they're decisions that we're not usually prepared to, to make. We haven't had to make those in the past, but the advances in health care have made it more likely that we were going to have to make those decisions. So realizing that you might be making this decision without any guidance from the person themselves should motivate people to want to talk about these things. Mm -hmm. It's a great blessing for a person to talk to their loved ones about what they want so that they don't feel that it's their decision at the time a difficult decision might need to be made. Well, speaking of blessings, I think you've made a difficult topic a lot easier. We know that there are uh, solid ways to make sure our wishes are followed in those final days and, and hours of our lives. So thank you so much, Don Johnson, for teaching us about advanced directives and for being here on Champions of Care. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. When we return, we'll talk with a palliative care and hospice specialist about hospice care. And we'll visit the inpatient hospice unit at Oakwood Annapolis Hospital. Stay with us.